Good morning. Are you hungry? Good, because I'm about to rustle up some breakfast. And as I'm English, it will be a full English breakfast. A full English breakfast, sometimes simply called a full English, is a hot meal. It has been cooked and usually we cook it in the frying pan. So some people will refer to it as a fry up. A fry up. Do you fancy a fry up? Now this is breakfast and breakfast is of course served in the morning, but do not be surprised if you see a full English breakfast on the menu in a cafe or in a pub, but it will usually be called an all day breakfast, but it consists of the same items. Now, before I start cooking, let me serve you up a little tidbit. If you really enjoy learning about culture, if while you're learning language, you want to have that human connection, then I can definitely recommend today's sponsors, italki italki allow you to have that human connection because you can connect with teachers all over the world at any time of the day or night simply by using a device connected to the internet so it's really convenient and as they work with native teachers you will be getting a real flavor of the real language and how it's really spoken and to spice things up if you click on the link in the description box below, then you will get $10 in credit when you make your first purchase. So you make the first purchase and then you'll get $10 credit as long as you followed that link down below. And $10 will get you a lesson. So you're basically buying one lesson and getting one for free. Right, I'm hungry. Firstly, the ingredients. No full English breakfast is complete without bacon. Ta-da! These are called bacon rashers. So they might ask you how many rashers you would like on your breakfast. Normally you get one or two. Bacon is normally cooked in one of two ways. It's either fried in a frying pan with a little oil, or you can grill it under the grill. Then we have eggs. On a full English breakfast, the egg is typically fried. However, there are many other options to choose from. You could go for a boiled egg, which is where the egg is put in its shell in boiling hot water until the insides are firm. If you opt for a soft boiled egg, then it will mean the yolk, the golden section is still loose. But if you opt for a hard boiled egg, you boil it for a little longer until the inside is firm but that's no good for dunking. Alternatively, you could opt for a poached egg. I personally cannot poach an egg, it's quite difficult. It's where you remove the shell, but still manage to keep the egg all together and you cook it like a boiled egg, just without the shell. It's very difficult. Or you can opt for scrambled egg. Scrambled egg is where you mix the egg with milk, you stir it all together, you put it into a hot pan and then you keep stirring until it starts to cook and becomes lumpy and fluffy and delicious. How do you like your eggs? Fried, boiled, poached or scrambled? Next up we have sausages. Whoops. Pork sausages which can be cooked in the frying pan or under the grill or in the oven even. Although I think that takes longer. Then we have something called black pudding. Now, despite the name, this isn't sweet. This is a savoury cut of what looks like a sausage, but it's made of congealed pig's blood. Mmm. You would cook this in the frying pan for around six to eight minutes. You'll also find on the plate mushrooms and tomatoes. As far as I know, you fry the mushrooms and you bake or grill the tomato. A firm favourite with many are the baked beans. One of the biggest brands in the UK is Heinz Baked Beans. Now this is a sweet little addition to the breakfast plate. This obviously can be cooked in a pan or warmed in the microwave. And to finish it off, you'd have a couple of slices of toast. 
These are referred to as rounds of toast. I don't know why. So one slice is one round, two slices, two rounds. How many rounds of toast do you like? And the toast, of course, is normally made in the toaster, but if you don't have a toaster, then it could be toasted under the grill. Oh, hang on, before you start eating, there's just one more thing that will complete the breakfast, and that's a cup of English tea. It's a great way to start the day. Perfect. Now, I hope you've enjoyed learning about the traditional English breakfast. I'd love to know what your traditional breakfast is, or if you have full English, do you do anything different? Let me know in the comments below. If you did enjoy this, then please do give it a thumb up. Don't forget about the wonderful offer with italki, and if you do take a lesson with them, or if you have in the past, then please let me know your experiences down in the comment section below. Until next time, enjoy your breakfast.